This is a lens that made me switch systems. So when I decided to make the switch from shooting full-time on Canon to full-time on Fujifilm, there was one lens that made me want to make that switch more than anything else. And the craziest thing about all that is that that lens wasn't even produced by Fujifilm. The lens that I'm talking about is this one here. The Zeiss Tuit 32mm 1.8. Why on earth did Zeiss stop making these? Now, the Zeiss 32 1.8 to it is a fairly old lens, releasing in 2014 for Fuji and Sony E-mount, and it is part of just three to it lenses released by Zeiss for Fujifilm. The other lenses in the family include the 12mm 2.8 and the 50mm f2.8 macro. So to put it into perspective, Fuji unveiled the X-mount with the X-Pro1 in 2012, meaning that the last to it lens debuted just two years after the introduction of the X-mount. I haven't had any experience with the other two lenses, but this 32 1.8 has been one of my absolute favorite lenses ever since I began using it on my X-Pro2 and now on my X-H2S and X-T5. I discovered this lens through a fabulous GX Ace video and I decided to go for it over the far more common recommendation of the Fuji 35mm 1.4 and I think that it has a certain character and appearance to the photos that is just so special. Not to forget that incredible Zeiss pop, that 3D look that the lens seems to give photos as well. When this lens released, it was met with mixed reviews. Most people really didn't agree with its fairly high price tag, especially when you compared it to the Fuji 35mm 1.4, but Nowadays with sales and use prices, you can pick one of these up for similar money to the Fuji 35 1.4. But should you? In this video, I'll explain why I think you should. Firstly, how gorgeous does this lens look? I mean, the industrial design is just stunning. It is reminiscent of very high-end Zeiss lenses like the Otis. It has this sleek design with these rubber rings and two beautiful Zeiss logos either side of the lens. The aperture ring is clicky and overall the lens just feels fantastic in the hand and mounted on any camera. But thankfully, it's not just a lens that looks pretty. The quality of the images that this planar design is capable of producing is simply breathtaking as well. Zeiss's planar lens design was introduced in 1896, although the design has had many updates to make it one of the most iconic lens designs of all time. This 32 1.82, it has eight elements in five groups. And on a Fuji crop sensor, the 32 millimeter focal length is like a 48 mil on full frame, which makes it super practical and versatile as an everyday lens for capturing all sorts of things. But personally, I love using this thing for portraits. This thing was basically glued to my X-Pro2 when I traveled to Bali and I actually used it to capture heaps of uh, great street shots as well. Um, I know it might be a little bit tight for some people. Some people might prefer a bit more of a wider angle lens, but personally for me, I started off shooting 50mm, um, but the very first lens I used on my on my M2 was a 50mm and I've just got a sweet spot for 50mm lenses and being 32 instead of 35, it's just a little bit wider than 50, which I think is really, really cool. I like that a lot. Like GX Ace mentioned in his review of this lens, the rendering is very, very reminiscent of the Zeiss 45mm planar lens from the Contax G system. So it has that same pop and unique bokeh characteristics and I have used that lens in the past and that lens was simply sublime. So to be able to get something similar to that for digital, I think is really, really cool. And I don't know how to explain it, but when you take photos with this lens, they just have this particular look to them that I think is super pleasing and also extremely sharp as well. So its center sharpness is excellent all the way down to 1.8, but it, I would say it's at its peak, probably from F2 and above. Um, at 1.8, there is a little bit of chromatic aberration. You know, it's a shame, but I really have no complaints otherwise about the image quality. I think that the images that this lens can produce are just exceptional. And I think it's different enough from the 35.1.4, which, you know, has different... The, the way that this lens and the 35.1.4 render images, in my opinion, having shot the 35.1.4 in the past, I think it, they are very, very different lenses. And I personally don't think it's, it's a bad idea to have both of them. I think they both serve different purposes. You know, I definitely want to get the 35.1.4 sometime down in the future, but honestly, this 32 to it is just so excellent that I actually haven't felt the need to yet. Let's talk about a few things that I don't love about this lens. So firstly, the rubber rings. Um, while I do think they look really nice aesthetically, uh, they do tend to collect dirt quite easily. And I have seen older examples of this lens with loose rubber grips, which is unfortunate. Next up, it's 
it's not weather sealed, which, you know, for how much it costs brand new, it would, you would hope it would be, but um, that's, it isn't, so it's a shame. But um, it also is just a 1.8 lens. So, you know, that's one of the big sort of upsides of the Fuji lens is you do get that extra strop of light. The 1.8 is a little bit of a disappointment. Uh, I think if this had a, a 1.4 aperture, it probably would have been a little bit more favorably received. But look, it isn't the end of the world. There are plenty of amazing lenses out there that are F2 and above, and it would have been a nice thing to have, but whatever, it's okay. Finally, I would say that the thing that really annoyed me the most about this lens, and this was back when I had the X-Pro2, was its fairly average autofocus performance. So I think it's certainly improved when using it on a newer body like the X-C5 or X-H2S, but the focus does sometimes frustratingly miss, which can be really, really annoying. However, even with the autofocus annoyances, you come home, you pop in that SD card, and you are just blown away by how bloody great the photos look taken with this lens. <laughs> When I use this lens, uh, when I so when I got my expert, the, like to expand more so on, on what I said at the start of the video, um, because it's like it might seem a little confusing as to why I wanted to switch so badly from Canon to Fuji for a lens that Fuji didn't even make and was available on Sony. But when I switched to the expert, like when I got, I, so I bought an expert too, just to kind of just try Fuji out again and. and um, have something a little bit smaller and, and just try to get the fun back into photography. I made a video all about why I switched and I'll link it in the, I'll link it in the description. You can definitely check that out as well. But when I used the Fuji, when I had the X-Pro2 and I mounted this lens onto it, there was just something so beautiful about that setup and the quality of the images that I got out of this lens and that camera combo, it was just incredible. I mean, it really, it, it was like, it was like unlike anything I'd ever seen before. It was so stunning. The way that it rendered, like the way it like, that um, people look on this, like the way that it rendered people and the way that it just rendered scenes and stuff like that, it was just amazing. I, I loved it. And I was like, you know, like, yes, I know this lens was available for E-mount, but I've never liked Sony personally. Sony for me has never been really, I've never just been interested in it. I've always felt it's a bit boring. Um, I hate the UI on Sony's. And so that was kind of off the cards for me. But I loved Fuji. Like I really, really loved the way that Fuji worked and I loved the way that like Fuji handled and, and, and all that stuff. And so having this lens on the Fuji system, it just felt like the best of both worlds. And I do really, really wish that Zeiss continued to expand the two at line. Um, I think a 28 millimeter or a 35 millimeter equivalent variant would have been such a great companion lens to this 50 mil equivalent. And it's really upsetting that Zeiss gave up on the Fuji system so early into its life because its first offering was absolutely fantastic. And with how cheap you can find these now, honestly speaking, it is a no brainer to try it out. I think that this lens presents excellent value. And yeah, I think it's it's a really seriously underappreciated lens for the Fuji system. And even all these years later, with all these new lenses that I've tried out, the 32 1.82, it still remains in my kit and it still remains an absolute favorite of mine. And I would really, really recommend trying this thing out. I think, yeah, you can find these for around about the same money as the 35 1.4 Fuji. And I think this is just a lot more of an interesting lens than the 35 1.4 Fuji. There is something to be said about the way that the planar design renders images. And yeah, I think definitely if you have a Fuji camera, you should absolutely give this lens a go because I don't think you'll be disappointed by it. Anyway, that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys like the video, definitely be sure to subscribe. I've got lots more great photography content coming in the future. Have a lovely day. Bye.